The East Farm is located in Valley, Pennsylvania. The farm has been in the family. I am the ninth generation of our family that owns it. Uh, the farm was actually deeded by Thomas Penn, who is the son of William Penn. And the first two, the first family name was Bauer. There were two generations of Bauer. And then a Moyer man married a Bauer woman. And then an East married a Moyer daughter. And since that time, it's been owned by six generations with the last name of East. So Ryan would actually be, will be the 10th generation of ownership. Uh, yeah, my name is Ryan East and I uh, started our, our greenhouse business with Crop King uh, in 2008. The hydroponic greenhouse is truly a family run business where everyone contributes. My wife is responsible for a lot of the ordering and um, she was doing much of the delivery, um, but now she um, has given some of it up and Ryan's wife, Amanda, is picking up on some of the deliveries now and Ann does childcare for her kids. So that's a nice involvement for her. And then we have two women that we hire uh, that are not family members, but they've been long time, well, one is a long time acquaintance and the other is actually a, 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 fam a relative of the family. And so Lisa manages the greenhouse, does I would say 90% of the work in the greenhouse. And then Jewel has really um, involved, is much more involved and almost to the point that she can be a type of manager and go ahead with almost everything in the lettuce house. Uh, so both of those are roughly 30 hour a week employees. And then we have four part-time employees. Uh, one only works in the summertime and the other three just occasionally uh, they're they're actually young teenagers that help so those would be the employees yeah my i have four kids my oldest is nine now and uh she's you know likes to, to take some uh, gymnastic classes and stuff like that uh, that's an additional money and and so right now we we have her um putting labels in our clamshells which she does a good job at um, and she's done some transplanting of, uh, of the lettuces in the greenhouse um, and my four-year-old son, um, you know, is all excited about helping too. And we, we have him, you know, loading of clamshells in, in the box. He, he's able to do that. And uh, I think he's helped with some putting tomatoes in the, you know, picking crate. I'll walk behind uh, my dad who's doing that. Um, but they, they all love to come and, and see, you know, what's going on. Utilizing their controlled environment greenhouse, the East family is able to grow a large variety of produce all year long. In our in the lettuce house, we call it. Um, we have a handful of lettuces with the the Rex bib is the predominant one, and then uh, basil, the living basil would be our second largest crop, and they're the two that we uh, wholesale. Um, and then we have like a, a salad, living salad blend. Um, and then I do arugula, my watercress. Um, I do some then some specialty crops for our market here and some restaurants like baby bok choy, um, spinach. I've tried some spinach, the red red and green leaf uh, lettuces, heads, individual heads, and uh, I've done um, some microgreens and pea shoots and things like that, also in smaller quantities. And then we have the tomato house with the beefsteak tomatoes, which is about 75, 80 percent of the house production. Uh, cherry tomatoes and and seedless cucumbers as well. The produce that is grown in the East greenhouse is local, pesticide free, and highly nutritious. You know, it's it's the cleanliness and the like. The colors is so amazing, and and the chefs in the restaurants just like the cleanliness of it. That it's it's ready to to go, ready to prepare and or, or cook with, and and then the shelf life is you know especially for the lettuces and things that go in cold storage. It's just a great feature um, for, for me to, to manage um, the selling because if I don't sell something at its freshest you know, time after a day or so um, to a, a top restaurant or, or a grocery store, then I can hold it in the cold storage and you know, I might go down my list of customers who might not pay as much and offer it to them and, and go down the line the next week. And so it's, you know, it's, not not very stressful to, to not be able to sell it right away. I've learned that, you know, one week you're like, man, there's we didn't sell anything this week. Uh, but I've learned not to panic because if I adjust something, 
then all, almost 99% of the time. The next week, either another customer will come along and it'll just go, you know, if I, you're just patient and, and are able to manage it and store it. Crop King prides itself on offering a high level of customer support for new and existing customers. The first year, first two years, I actually would feel guilty and apologize when I would call out between uh, Jeff the engineer and Jim Brown the, the botanist guy. We would, we would frequently call out and we can't say enough about how much they have helped us on an, on, from day one. Uh, we never, you know, we got to the point where we became very relaxed with them and realized, hey, this is a service that Otnet is offered along with our original contract. Um, and just the, the openness and the friendship, actually, that, that we established with the company, uh, we, just, we just can't say enough about uh, all the help, speci uh, specifically with diseases that crop up and uh, how through simply taking pictures, emailing them out and getting a remedy within a half hour sometimes, um, that has been very helpful. Um, Jeff in particular, we can initially, we had a lot of computer issues and other problems that I didn't understand that Jeff was extremely helpful and patient with us. Uh, one time we, we uh, one of the iGrows, uh, went bad and Jeff had one out of the company. So he said, I'll, I'll take off at, I forget, I think we, we left that, we established a point that was almost halfway between here and the company. And we met um, in a, a parking lot of a restaurant and exchanged the computer. And that was really, I, you know, that's, uh, to me that said a lot about the company and what they were willing to do for their, for their uh, customers. And so we are, we are just so appreciative of it. And if we have had it, to do it again, I mean, we, we simply tell a lot of potential growers that, that this is the way to go unless they have good background in plant growing, especially, and plant growing is different as I learned um, in the hydroponic environment than it is out in the fields. And you have to learn a whole new way of uh, controlling the environment and, and nurturing them. And, um, so we always tell them that, you know, it's, it's an advantage to go with a company that's going to stick with you and not just sell the product and, and then move on and try to sell more product to someone else without helping you on an ongoing basis. And we, like I hardly get to talk to Jeff anymore because we have understanding now of, of uh, how everything works. And the only reason we, mostly the reason that we call is when we get ourselves into trouble if we mix fertilizer wrong and how we can correct that and remedy that and uh and then if, if we get diseases that crop up they're not that we're not aware of um those are the times that we call but yeah we're we just can't say enough about what the company has done for us with local produce in high demand the east family is preparing for the future of their multi-generational farm Yeah, as far as um, as far as our the business, the greenhouse business, produce business, we originally prepared the site when we took the corn around of the field for six bays. We started with three, we added a fourth. So uh, that same site is is already uh, excavated and, and prepared for two more bays. Um, and I think at this point, you know, what I would do is uh, probably expand the lettuce and basil operation, and then if we added two more bays, have Two more tent have the taller bays for our tomatoes, so bump our tomatoes out to a taller um, two bay structure. You know, the wish is always that you hope that somebody in the family will be there. Uh, now, there's two families. Um, my brother has uh, his children. One of his children is very, very interested. Um, we're just beginning to look at the transfer of the farm to the next generation and it's very complicated um, because we right now have four businesses on the property um, i don't think it'll it'll probably drop to three and probably ultimately two my business um, i possibly ryan would take it over i'm not sure it's uh, no till is not a lot of work so um, and my brother's cattle grazing would fit right in with his daughter and her husband so it could come to two but um, just learn, you know, trying to see how that would work um, is going to take, it's going to be a challenge because you have multiple families, multiple businesses, um, and trying to live on the same property, although that doesn't have to be. So we're going to have to get creative and try to um, make a plan that will 
uh, support and be you know, very workable and manageable for multiple families of the next generation. So, you know, that is our goal. The farm is preserved. It'll always have to be agriculture. So it's been permanently preserved for the state. Um, so, uh, which my parents were adamant about doing. So really, the, my parents need to get a lot of credit for um, the heart for saving the land, the heart for keeping us in agriculture. And they, uh, I know they really pass it on to me and then eventually my brother. And now we have several kids in the next generation that are, have taken on that same approach of valuing the land and the property and agriculture and wanting to continue it. So I have no doubt that it will continue in the family. Uh, it's just we don't know what it's going to look like because of the multiple families interested in it.